we're going to get started here uh, on the gland and cylinder head. And I turned off the base already. See, just click, you know, you guys should know how to do that by now, turning things on and off. And we want a new component underneath the cylinder head, right? As another cylinder head, underneath the cylinder, I should say. So uh, we have cylinder is active. We're going to say new component. And we're going to name it cylinder head gland for the packing gland it's called and we'll make that active there we go now we'll just go sketch of course or short s for shortcut create sketch and we'll select this face there we go now we're c for circle get our gland or in the center we just hover over the center, right? And it's the same diameter. We're just going to say stop sketch. And we'll do an extrude. And the end is 150 thousandths, 150. And we want to have the center in there also. Make sure you get that. And we, we'll just leave the four holes and we'll, we'll expand those holes like we did on the other end new body okay okay let's uh, we'll just expand the holes right off the bat here get this out of the way sketch select that we'll just do a circle and make it 120 call it good do the circular pattern select it select the center uh, we want to highlight that just so we get the center Make it four holes, call them good. See how fast you, once you understand these commands and and get going you, and use them over and over and over. Now I'm doing extrude and we're just gonna select the donuts. You can see how fast this can actually be. And we reach through and we'll select the back side of the, to extrude those holes through and their cuts. And they're only through the head, see? So I'll say okay. I like confirming a lot of stuff. It's eh, sometimes you can uh, cut through three or four different things and they're not right. <laughs> All right, so another sketch on the surface and C for circle in the center. This is 0.5. This is the creation of the boss. Now there's a hole through the center also. So we're gonna put that a through hole. We're just gonna put that in there right now. And that's a number 11 drill. And using a eye engineer, a number 11 drill is 0.191. Just doing it, I'll look it up pretty quick. Say stop. And we'll extrude the donut out. 0.4 okay now it has a hole in it but we didn't go the other way right so now we'll just do another quick extrude select that make that a cut and it, and it can go back to the back surface again just flip it around select the surface and it's okay now we have our through hole already through into the cylinder and if you turn around you'll see that Uh, I hope I'm not going too fast here, but I, I can speed up as, as we've gone along with the project. We're going to create sketch here. Now we're going to create a counter bore. You should be able to get faster and faster at this. This is 0 0.290 because we're doing this over and over and over. But this is, a, this is the counter bore for the gland. So stop sketch, extrude, extrude the donut, and that is point minus 0.375 deep see how quickly we've made the cylinder head we, we have the, the screw holes the bolt holes in it we have our through hole we have our counter bore we have our boss made and 
we're going to do one more. We're going to do another new thing here just to, just to show you this one. So now you, if you wanted to make that a casting real quick, this is a simple thing, but you want, you'd want you have to have draft on this. You wouldn't want these sides to be straight like that. Up here is a nice little command called draft uh, under modify. And it starts off with a dialog box saying select uh, on the plane. The, in this case, this is the plane I would select. You can select this plane, but you, and we'll, we'll, we'll do them both just to show you what it does. And we're going to do a one-sided deal, and the face we're going to select is right here. Now, as I, you can you can grab this and and just see what it does. See, see how it's in and out, and and you can change the angle. So there's five degrees, and there's ten degrees, fifteen, or if you went the other way. So let's just do five degrees. And now it added draft. Now. To be observant of what happened here is this diameter here on this out on the top end did not change. The bottom one did. And that's what we wanted. That's why I selected that plane. Let's let me cancel this. And we'll, we'll do this again. We'll modify draft. And we're going to select this plane instead. And then we're going to select this face. And, and now I'm going to grab this again. Now watch what happens. As I do this the the top end changes and the bottom stays the same but that's not the effect i want i didn't want to have to shrink that down all right so that's why the face it, it matters what face you use to put your draft from i should say so let's cancel that okay so we'll, we'll, we'll go back put the draft in so we'll, we'll select here and we'll select this face and we're going to put in oh five degrees we can call it good. Now we got a nice little draft on there. It looks kind of cool. And we didn't change our outside, our end diameter of a half an inch. So that's how easy it is to put draft in. And this was a very simple, that was a very simple, uh, this is a part or feature to modify and change uh, with draft. They can get very complicated uh, when you start grabbing faces that go around curves and, and all that. It might not give you the effect you want. Uh, you have to be you have to be very observant of how you're doing that sometimes, and uh, to make sure you're getting getting what you want in the end, uh, especially about uh, dimensional changes that you're drafting from the right face and things like that. So that's why I wanted to demonstrate that to you about draft. It can be very, it's very handy though. Uh, all right, now we need also, what do we else do we need here? We need, uh, we got our, our through hole, we've got our counter bore, then we need to put our thread in here also. So we need, let's just do, we'll just do another uh, sketch. Well, I lost my uh, create sketch here. There we go. Create sketch and circle. This is for a, they're putting in a 3 h 24 thread. So that's a letter Q and it's a quarter inch D. Q is 0 0.332, 0 0.332. Let's see, stop sketch. Now we're gonna drill that out some more. A little more donut in there, but it's only 0.25. Minus 0.25 as a cut. So now I have, you can see the steps we have in here. We have our through hole down here. We have our counter bore for the, where the packing is going to go. And then we have a portion we're going to thread. So now let's, let's thread that. So we're going to thread that. We're just going to select that one surface. And it's a, we have to change our sizing here to 3 8 and it's 3 8 24 UNF. And uh, we'll just say okay. We'll just leave it as a picture. We're not going to model it. You can if you want. But anyway, there we go. So that boss is all done and featured. That's pretty good. Let's put four screws in real quick. And uh, where are we going to get those? We're going to do an insert and McMaster car. We'll just 
zoom on down here to 440s and alloy steel and quarter inch long it's going to come up pretty fast there we go and product detail on down line to the step and save there we go we got one now it'll align it with where the the where our origin is and we know that so we need to adjust it we're going to turn it to a proper orientation make it a little faster now what one thing is fusion does is this why you should move it as soon as you create it the component here uh, because the first move here is you can call it a free move it's not going to add anything to your history line and you know you if you start looking at what the history line looks like it's getting very long we have a lot of stuff in there and so if you can shorten it up and have a it's less calculations for uh, this 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 model drawing to have to do that's why when you start adding all these parts uh, it, it can take longer and longer to regenerate and save and all that that's why uh, you do sub assemblies and things like that to make it a little bit quicker for you this model here we are putting a lot of parts into and no sub assemblies yet but what I'm going to do the crankshaft and the, I think the crankshaft and the piston rod will make two separate sub assemblies to show you the, the difference there about how you take a, make a sub assembly and then we'll move it or I was just saying then we'll add it to this assembly here the, the total engine assembly and normally I would have made a lot of these things sub-assembly. The, the cylinder itself, one, I would have made it just a sub-assembly. And then I would have built a complete assembly out of all the sub-assemblies. But uh, that doesn't teach you anything. So that's why we're trying to cover a lot of bases here in just one model. If you can complete uh, all this stuff I'm doing, showing you in this one model, you'll be able to draw... Just probably about anything you need for your shop. Uh, uh, not maybe not everything. Now I'm not talking about the guys who are doing five axis CNCs and all that stuff. But but you know you'll be able to draw a major portion of what you want in your shop. Yeah, you'd be amazed. <laughs> Let me put it that way. So let's go uh, point to point now and uh, select that one, and we'll select. Uh, this hole here it doesn't matter which hole I select uh, by the way it, it really doesn't and say uh, okay see now that that gave me that one move and I'm in and I can then also say do an as-built joint capture position boom there now we can we can do the well we can do the uh, copy and paste and add all of our screws, right? Okay, all the screws are in. And our gland uh, head is uh, pretty much complete. We still have the packing to draw. And we still have the gland nut to design. <laughs> we're going to get them all done here, though. Uh, let's put a little, we're going to put a little color on it just to, to make it fun here. A for appearance and the blue for that component. And let's see, now it's going to paint it all down inside there, but that's going to be machined, right? So we have a polished aluminum on our palette, and we're going to, we're going to do a face and reach down in there. And we might have to zoom in. Sometimes that's what you got to do you to, to really get the surfaces you want there. You have to reach in there. There we go. Uh, and one more. See, we didn't quite get that one. There we go. 
Now, if you had modeled the threads, you'll have blue lines and stuff in there. And it's a real kind of a, you have to go in there and select all those too. But now we can go back to cylinder as the active component, if you want, and you can see how it all looks. And I think that looks just a uh, fine and dandy. Just fine and dandy. All right, the packing. I'm going to I'm going to make the cylinder head gland the active component, and I'm going to add these two components to it because they are actually integral components for the packing gland. So we've uh, I've selected the cylinder head gland as the active component. Let's see what can we do. We it's we can can we reach down in there and draw draw what we want to draw? I think we can. So we're going to do sketch again, create sketch, and on that surface, that bottom of the packing gland, let's select that as our as our sketch surface. And we're going to go C for circle. It's going to take us only about two seconds to draw this. Let's see, the OD is 0 0.285, 0 0.285. C for circle for the ID is 0.189. Stop sketch, extrude, select the donut we just drew, and its length is 0 0.1875, 0 0.1875, 3 16 There we go. It drew a nice little uh, piece in there. All right. Now, my extrude, I failed to pay attention. I said join, that's why it turned blue on us. So let's change that to new body and say, okay, now it's gray, now it ought to be, right? There's our packing. Now, if you go over there to your, your uh, browser list, we can scroll down. Let's see here, why are we scrolling down? Bodies, here we go, body. There it is. Now, I don't have a component, but I know that's my body now I could rename that right off there but let's, I'm just gonna right click on it and I'm gonna say create a component out of it so I have a component so I can put a joint in let's name it packing there we go packing looks good to me now, remember, it's just sitting in there. It, it's, it's drawn in place, but sitting in there, and I can move it, so I can, you know, grab it and drag it. Right? We don't want to do that. So let's uh, make a let's just make an as-built joint on that. Also, we will just click on that and click on this and rigid sounds good. That way, it's going to stay there, and we'll, we can do an appearance on it. And yeah, let's make it out of something that might show white. Uh, Plastics. Let's see what do we got here. We got some ABS white. Yeah, that's anything white. I'm just looking for white. So, and we'll we'll uh, oh we can we can say component. Drag it in there. Select that component. There. Now let's draw our nut. Now we're still under the the cylinder head gland as our active component. All right, I want to draw the gland nut now. We have a few options. We could draw it probably right in place here and do the stacking type way of drawing it. But I, I really like to draw it as a profile. And so I need a plane to draw it on. And right now there's only a plane in the wrong direction. So what what can I do? How, how do I get a plane along the axis of this and right on center line well I know a distance I, I when I designed the cylinder right from this surface here to the center I said it was 0.8 inches to the center of the bore so and my plane here is on that surface so I could just make a I could make an offset plane and I choose that as that plane there as my reference right and I could come over 0.8 inches and now I know that that is in this that should be in the center, right? And it would be. 
and then I could draw on that plane. That's one method. The other method is uh, is is really uh, rather simple, also, and that and you know it's going to be perfect. Axis through center cylinder cone or torus. Now, if you need an axis through something, this is the way to do it. Select on that, and you can put an axis down the center, and it's just going to figure it out for you. There's a there, we have a center bore. We have this circle out here. We drew around it. So anything here we want to set, we can select the center of this, anything. Just select it, and it's going to put an axis right down the middle of it. There's a yellow line. Now that's a center line axis right through the center of the bore. And we can use that all through our drawings when we go to, when we go to make a few other parts, even. So, so that's, that's a nice reference uh, to have. And then we can say construct a plane at an angle. Because that is going to you're going to select a line. Well, a line is also an axis, and you could select that, and boom, there's there's a plane on the axis, right down the center line. Here, we'll just turn right down the middle, and I could turn it at any angle I wanted. And I could just grab this little button here and rotate it if I want to any angle I want. But we're going to leave it at zero, and we're going to say okay. Now I can also use this plane later on anywhere downstream of my history to draw other things on. Like maybe the piston or the piston rod or any of that kind of stuff. Because those things need to be in, those items need to be in line uh, with this. So maybe, maybe we'll do that in that way instead of uh, making an assembly of the, the piston. We can draw the piston and piston rod on this plane here which would be a profile. So let's do that. Let's now sketch, sketch, and we're going to select this plane for our gland. Now any, now we know we're on the center line, so we can do, all we have to do is draw a profile. We don't have to draw it right inside, or we can draw it out here where we can see it. So a line, uh, we're just going to draw a line here for reference. Uh, the nut is five sixteenths of an inch long three one two five yeah let's see what do we so we had a three eighths diameter for the threaded part so that's going to be half a three eighths going up here point three seven five divided by two And then uh, we have uh, a line going over this way. <laughs> and, okay, we're, we're not going to care about dimensions right yet. And then we have a little, well, we even have a little uh, thread relief like uh, on packing nuts. You want to make sure you have this so you can really not have any interference. So we're going to put a little groove in there. And then it's going to go up a little bit for the nut part and not past the end. And then, uh, and then we'll come on down here. So ba that's basically the profile, except for the uh, the bore. So we'll just put the line in here to represent the bore. Make a hex on this this outer part here, and it's a three eighths hex. So, so we're going to make this diameter. We're going to set this dimension here as a. It will be the circle for the for an inscribed circle, and the hex will be drawn on the outside. And that would be then 38.375 divided by 2. Get a few more things uh, fixed up here. So let's uh, let's tr do some trimming. Let's trim out this. This is uh, going to set our bore. So that dimension from here down to here is 0.1875 divided by 2. This here can become a construction line. We'll just leave it a, make it a construction line. And then this dimension is the same 5 16 as but down here. We really don't need this dimension anymore. We need to get some more things constrained, obviously. 
So let's see the width of the this relief. We want to remain good. So we can just we'll just dimension each one of these. Okay, that sets the dimension that, because these are set. This is set, so that's automatically set. Use some uh, constraints if you can. Constraints, these are parallel, right? This one's parallel. Oh, you get an error saying it's, it's over constrained, so you don't need to do that. These are these perpendicular constraints are in here, and so that makes that parallel. We're still not we're still not white, right? So what do we need? We need we have a height, we have a height, we have some horizontals. So we haven't bound this anywhere to anything. So let's say let's 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 take this dimension out. Say dimension this again, that line to this point. Does that help us any? No, that didn't help us. Let's set our dimension to this center point here. Oops. We'll select this line and that point and have a vertical distance. And now it's constrained in space around the origin. That is what you're looking for, is constraining your, your work in space and or to another object that is constrained in space. So we'll dimension this to the origin and then we'll have a constraint in there, right? And then this dimension from here to here will constrain that, right? This dimension from here to here will constrain that. <laughs> now that we're fully constrained, we'll stop the sketch, of course. And, oh, the net's already made, right? What I did is I went ahead here and made it all to show you how to use the timeline in looking back at what you're what you've done or if you want to edit something in between there's nothing new on this nut that we've done except for maybe how I nip the corners which I'll I'll talk about so we're here at the gland head cylinder head gland right is our active component and that's where we formed our our uh, our first sketch uh, and I and I did not make the packing nut component yet. So I, I drew the sketch here and then I made the body and then I made the component. So as our timeline goes for now, what our timeline is showing is only the active component, the cylinder head gland. That's where we're at in that timeline, right? And it ended with the what did it end with here? The ended with this one here, which is sketch number what, 15, edit sketch, and it was well the hole, okay. But I had well packing the packing. We did the if you look over here, we did the packing, and then we did the packing nut actually. So there's our sketch for the packing nut, and we can we can open that back up and say edit sketch, and it's going to be what we just we're looking at except backwards here. We'll turn it around. There we go. There's our, our sketch again. Now I'm going to switch down here. We'll scroll down and we'll go down here. We'll stop sketch. Let's just say stop sketch. We'll scroll down our, our nut here. And down here I made the component packing gland nut and I made it from the body. So now I can make it as the active component. Right? See how it lights up? And if you open it up, you'll hit sketches, and there, there's the sketch for the next sketch we did on it. That next sketch is actually the hex formation. But here we could scroll back in the history of the packing nut, right? So now it's gone except for the sketch, and then we here's our revolve. There's our revolve to make it, and I've added color. Then I added some color to it. That was our sketch. Base, there it is. So I did the revolve, and then what I did is I did a chamfer on the end. I just scroll in my timeline along. You know, I can just make it disappear or make it come back. There's my chamfer, and then I did a thread, 3/8 24 on that one surface. 
and I modeled it. Then I did a sketch. Now, where's that sketch? That sketch is the hex on the end. And if I put my cursor on there, it kind of highlights it. And I could say edit sketch. And there's my hex I drew. I did a polygon, six sided, three eighths inscribed circle, which and centered on the center of our nut. If we needed to add some dimensions, we could since we were here, we can we could add a, a dimension to it. It might say no, we can't do that, but there we go. Did our dimension. Now to get this fully constrained, we we need to orient it or we need to constrain it to something in space. And I'm going to use the horizontal vertical constraint on one of the sides and that there that constrained it fully so stop sketch so that was a good edit there and then we extrude and you can say edit that feature if you want to see what that did and here you can see how I selected just the little points of space here to join and extrude the height of the head uh, 90 thousandths and say OK and now you'll have a hex then I wanted to nip the corners to make it look like uh, you actually like turn this on the lathe and if you just chamfer these you'll have nice square pointed chamfer it looks kind of funny so we'll edit this sketch and what I did in the same plane we drew it in we I drew a th triangle which is a polygon again three-sided and I just positioned it so it would nip the corner here of the high spot of the hex and you have to make this kind of big to make sure you get all the way around but since we drew it on a high corner it will just be just fine stop sketch and then we did a revolve it will just do an edit feature and you can see how that cut that we did a cut and you can see how here we'll get it we'll get it zoomed in and you can see how it is going to nip these corners off say okay and there's the corners nipped a little bit to make it look like you turned it that that's that's how I do that and for me that really works well I can really control how that looks and uh, as you adjust your triangle how much space you have right here and things like that I like doing it that way so there that was that's a demonstration of using the timeline to see how you progressed and how you can edit back in time uh, down at the bottom and you can see how our timeline is getting pretty long if we go back here we have everything turned on go back here to the highest level the whole engine and then you can look at that timeline and use these controls down here to to view it now there's a little slider bar here it's kind of gray oh. see now it's going to regenerate this is why the drawing is getting very large and it will take time to regenerate as it's clicking through the timeline yeah you can just say stop anytime. You can kind of watch it be built doing this. But this is what happens when you have such a long timeline. Yeah. A lot of stuff there. So when you make a sub assembly, you have a nice little short timeline. For your whole sub assembly, you can really speed up things in your regeneration process. Still got another page to go. It's almost to the end. Of the, the bar's getting over here to the end. Yeah, that's pretty good. Then we're back at the end of the timeline and so we have you know several pages of timeline and uh, that's why it's getting pretty complicated anyway we're going to we'll do sub assemblies for the piston and the crankshaft uh, next and I think that will all work out I hope that was a good good demonstration of the use of the timeline thanks you guys for watching please subscribe click the notification bell, all that good stuff. And check out the links I have in the description uh, for getting Fusion and, and uh, how to get Fusion for free for your home. Uh, 
you can do that. I know there, there's also the educational stuff, but you can also apply uh, through uh, Autodesk website for a home three-year license. Uh, it's for free. So that's what most everybody does. And uh, check, uh, get the, the shortcut PDF download. Make sure you get that. And check out the other videos we're doing. And appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you and thanks for watching and any suggestions you have in, in the bottom or if you have if you want questions answered, make sure you put them in the uh, comments and I'll appreciate it. Thanks you guys. We'll catch you in the next one. All right, we've got our revolve and we have our part formed. Now let's do a few other things to it. But first off, we want to make sure we make it the active component. Okay, so make sure you click over here, make it the active component. Okay, now we're now we can we'll, we'll do some additions and some changes to it. So let's first put a chamfer on the end here. About 10,000 should be enough. Make it look good. Remember, this is a small part. <laughs> uh, let's put the thread on right here. And that's going to be 3 8 24. There we go. We can even put a model in it to make it look good. Say OK. All right, now we're going to add the hex to it. We'll go create a sketch, select the end, sketch a polygon, circumscribe circle, and we're going to select the center and out to the edge, which would be 3 8 six sided, stop sketch. Okay, see what we're going to do? We're going to extrude. We're going to select these six little corners, like that. We're going to do a join. Make sure you do a join. I don't want, want it to be all one piece. We're going to bring it down to this edge, like that. There we go. Say OK. There, now it looks all one piece. Now, your part should have all smooth surface here, just like that, to make sure it joined and it's all one piece. Now, to chamfer this edge, I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it makes it look right. Let's put it that way. It's pretty easy. If you select each one of those edges, you'll make a little sharp corner here, and it will not look right. It'll look like a straight chamfer, straight chamfer, straight chamfer. It won't have that rounded-looking chamfer. So, make... Figure out where where is the plane. So under construction or where the plane is and the axis. So here's the axis we created right over here on the left. And here is the plane. If you hold your mouse on it, it kind of turns a color. You see how it changes that gray? That's the plane. If you zoom out, you'll see it better. See there? That's the plane we had created. So we're going to make another sketch on that plane. So we're just going to say create sketch. And we're going to choose that plane. All you got to do is put select it over there on the left. You don't have to necessarily turn it back on again. And now we're going to sketch a polygon and the circumscribed circle one. It really doesn't matter, but and just collect, select somewhere near that corner, anywhere near. And then you have a six in there. Tab over, change it to a triangle. Tab back. And make it fairly good size uh, compared to your part. Okay. Hit escape. And now you have this big triangle here. Now take this line and adjust this line in and out to where you might want it to cut. You're going to cut off that corner. But you have to cut off the corner all the way around on the high spot. So in this, in this case, if you look at your hex you got here, you, you, you're on a high spot, which is, makes it easier. You got a flat side here, so that's the high spot. 
so you know you're going to nip all the corners and you'll have a little bit in the middle and because you're not halfway down so that, that looks pretty good so that, give it a try right so stop sketch uh, zoom out here see we're leaving a little part so we're really zoomed in here on that do a revolve select your profile and, and that's not the angle that's not the axis we wanted it selected it you want this axis right there and yeah that that, that looks pretty good that might be a little too much actually you see how we have a little land here you might want to if you want to have that so that's just up there and kisses that circle area yeah it's fine or you can leave it like that it's up to you you can say uh, okay and then you can back up to the go back to the sketch for a second edit sketch uh, and and drag that line drag it out a little bit Oops. might have to uh here, sketch sketch line and so there so that uh, you saw that little box that came up it, it's asking you oh did you want the face do you want the line and I wanted the sketch line I didn't want to select the face see I should explain that next time we have that little box we'll talk about that there so I moved it out a little bit stop sketch and there that looks a little better uh, see how that made that nice uh, uh, nice arc right there a little little bit of flat there but little arc there there we go now we have our nut we'll change the appearance to nice shiny brass and uh, we're good all right now what we're going to do is we're going to Remember that's sitting there loose. That's it, it's it's drawn in place and all lined up, but it's it's sitting there loose. It's not joined yet. So we're going to do a different kind of joint here. We're going to do what's called a slider joint. We're going to select joint. We're going to select our two components, which is this one and that one. And I'm just going to select this end because it's, this end is because it's easy. We could select the other end, but I want to make sure I'm on this face here. And then I'm going to select this face here in the center. Holding down control, remember, you can just, that way you don't select all the other things. And uh, there. Oh, it flipped it over, so flip it back. And then and then hit animate, and you'll see it's like, now that is the direction we want it to go. We don't need it to rotate. We're just going to have it slide in and out. That's so when we assemble the engine, we can adjust it a little bit in position. And say, okay. Now, it's all the way in because we chose those faces. So you can just hold your mouse button on it and highlight it and you can drag it out a little bit if you want it out a little bit. So there. I think that looks really, really good. Let's uh let's see here. What can we do? We we can uh turn on Let's turn things back on uh, our base. We can turn our base back on. We can go up here, select the highest level of our uh, of our drawing, right? Fusion engine, and turn everything kind of back on. We still have some origins and some joints showing and all that, but that's all right. Here's our engine so far. We have cylinder heads now. We have our gland. We have our packing inside there, and if you wanted to see inside, you always could just say cylinder, 30%, let's say, and you can zoom in here, and now you can see exactly what we got going. So you can see your packing down in here, right there. That's the packing, and there's the nut, and you can see if we are even on touching the packing yet. We're not even down touching the packing yet, so... There you go. You can see all our ports. The thing is looking pretty good. Now, the one thing I did not do is add the extension like we did the protrusion into the cylinder on this head here. I did not add that. I forgot. So let's go back and uh, since we forgot something, let's go back and see if we can fix it really quick here. 
So first off, cylinder head gland is what we want to make sure is our active component, right? And we could uh, hide the cylinder body. No, we want to use it as a to project that that uh, the cylinder diameter on there. So we don't want to get rid of that quite yet. Let's see. Let's let's turn this a little bit. There we go. Let's see, what would we have to do, right? Everybody thinking? So we're, well, first off, we want to create a sketch, and we want to select that face. Sounds good. Capture the position, that's fine. And I'm going to turn it back at an angle so we can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to do a project that, I want to select that circle somehow. And it's not... See, it's not quite letting me do that, is it? Eh, sometimes it doesn't want to let you do things, right? Let's see, if I reach in through here, this angle, eh, that's the other cylinder head and all that. So let's do this. Let's go back, find the other cylinder head, turn it off, okay? And I can reach in the cylinder. Can I select? There we go. There I selected it reaching in the cylinder. It's a little hard to see that, but that's what I did. And you can turn, and now you can see the projected line on there. I say OK. Now I'm going to do an extrude. Or I'm going to stop sketch. I'm going to do an extrude. Select that and protrude it out. I uh, what do we do? 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths, 30 thousandths. Remember the port over here. Then we're going to turn and we can see our port right there and that line and that line there. And I think we're okay. And we're going to say join and uh, we're good.